right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine, and Pipeliner CRM joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Max Borges, who is in Miami Beach, Florida. How are you doing, Max? Great, John. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. And uh, Max awesome. is an ent entrepreneur who f founded the Max Borges Agency, tech-focused public relations firm. And you're also the author of the book, How to Be fan effing -tastic. And, That's right. Uh, which I think you have the book there, if you want to show everybody, so you don't believe it. Yeah, I sure do. Name. Here, there it is. Here it yeah. is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So that's good. You won't forget that title. So um, let's start off, Max. Um, what made you want to write this book in the first place? What motivated you? You know, over the years, I've had so many great mentors and people that have helped me in my life and, and have taught me so many different things. And, uh, and I wanted to kind of bring all of that learning that got me to where I am today into, you know, a simple book of quotes that really kind of define who who I am and how I live my life and and you know how I how I accomplish success myself. Yeah. So um, when you talk about that, so when people listening in, like they want to be fantastic or even effing fantastic, whichever whichever extreme they want to go to, um, what is what is the first thing that you did that you can look back on now and say that was a pivotal moment or that was a pivotal change or something that I focused more on that really led me to start on this journey? Yeah. Great. Great question. I mean, the first thing I did when I was uh, 19 years old, and I should tell you that. You know, I never went to, to college. I was a terrible high school student. Um, I was really destined to amount to nothing. But then when I was 19 years old, I read a book called Success Through a Positive Mental Attitude by Napoleon Hill and Clement Stone. And that really changed the tra trajectory of my life forever. Um, and, and not just because it was a great book that taught me a lot of amazing things. Um, most importantly, that I'm responsible for everything that happens in my life. And, and I can make things happen myself. And that gave me this incredible power. Um, but it also put me on this path of, of just learning, of self-help, of just reading. And so from that moment on, I would just read every book I can get my hands on, whether it was you know motivational stuff like Anthony Robbins or business books like books by Jim Collins, you know, whatever it was. And, and, and I would just consume them. I, I really, really enjoyed learning about business and self-help and be, being able to apply it in real time. In school, it never made any sense to me because I could never connect mm -hmm. the dots of why, am I, why are they teaching me these things and what does this mean to me in my life? But then once I got out of school and started opening up businesses and, and, and became more entrepreneurial, then I could apply those things that I'm learning directly. And that's my recommendation to everybody, and one of the quotes in my book is, um, you know, if if you don't know how to do it, there's a book that'll Correct. show you how to do it. You know, open the book. Life is an open book test. You know, mm -hmm. open the book. You know, school's not an open book test, but life is an open book test. You actually yeah, get yeah. to cheat. You know, you get to open up the book and, and find the answers in real time. And and yeah. and if you do that, you're going to remember what you learned. Yeah, and, and I think there's, there's a couple of things I just want to pick up on there. Number one is I think about that whole self-responsibility piece, because I do think that is so incredibly liberating when you realize that your life belongs to you, that everything happens belongs to you. And are yeah. there outside factors, other things? Of course there are, and they happen to everybody. Sure. But at the same time, it's like how you react to them, how you deal with them, and the choices that you make. And I do think that people, a lot of times people struggle with that. And especially we live in this pervasive culture of almost where people want to continually tell you that you're not responsible for anything. Right, right. And, and, and that's terrible, right? I, I mean, mm -hmm the more, I think the more responsibility that you can take for everything in your life, the more control you're going to have over your life. Even things that sometimes seem like they're outside of your yeah. control. You know, you get in your car and you go for a drive and somebody crashes into you and you go, oh, well, that wasn't my fault. They crashed into me. Well, mm -hmm. but could you have been 
you know, more of a defensive driver? Could you have sure. somehow avoided it? Could you have chosen not to go out and take that risk? You know, mm -hmm. like accept the risk that you take yeah. and, and, and know that, you know, there's always something that, that you can do. And not only that, but there, there's two quotes that kind of go hand in hand from the book. One is, it's all your fault. Mm -hmm. Now you can do something about it. Right. Right. And another one is, um, if you find yourself in a situation where you're met with a huge challenge, it's God telling you that he's got something for you to learn. And if you don't believe mm -hmm. in God, that's fine. It's the universe telling you, you've got yeah. something, he's got, they've got something for you to learn. And, and that quote was something that I heard in, in church once. And it, it, it was, it was really kind of eye opening for me because I felt like, oh, these challenges aren't just these, these large barriers that someone has thrown in front of me that I should be complaining about. It's just something I don't know how to do yet. Mm -hmm. But if I knew how to do it, if I knew how to handle that situation, this wouldn't be a problem. So, yeah. and, and like you said, uh, also is the, the idea that you can educate yourself, like there are all the resources and the, I mean, think of it more than uh, ever. More than ever. I mean, think about when we were, uh, I'm going to just assume that we're relatively same age groups, but I mean, when we're coming up, I mean, basically, you only had access to a certain amount of material, you know, to educate yourself in stuff at the library or, or whatever, if you're lucky enough to go to college or whatever. whatever. Um, uh, and now you have everything at your fingertips. So what's your excuse? Right? Yeah, there's no excuse. Every everybody's written a book, <laughs> including me, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and shared their, their <laughs> lifetime of experiences. There's, you know, dozens of books on any topic you could possibly, you know, have an issue with. So if you need to learn about sales, there's a million mm -hmm. ways to learn about sales. If you need to learn about how to hire people, if you need to learn how to market your company, you need to learn just anything. It's, it's out there and there's so many sources. And, and it doesn't matter if you don't like to read. Okay, there's videos, there's online classes, yeah. there's, there's podcasts, there's anything and everything that you want. So just and go I, out there and get it. And I think the other thing that I just wanted to ask you about is, okay, so sometimes people embark on these, uh, on these journeys of self-reflection and, and you know, could change your life and all of this, could take responsibility. And it's fine and it, for a while, but you always hit some obstacles and sometimes people use that as, okay, it's a confirmation that, well, this isn't going to work rather than here's just, as you said, here's something that I just need to learn. How do you, how do you help people continue and keep motivated to move forward? Because let's face it, if you go on a, if you go on a journey of self-discovery and changing your life, it's not going to be smooth sailing. Right. Right. You know, that, that's a good question because it's, it's not linear. Mm. In you know, success is not linear. Yeah. You don't just, you, you take, you should take a small step every single day. And if you take a small step every day, you'll eventually get where you want to go. But the path is a bit of a, of a winding road. And sometimes it's going to feel like, hey, I'm taking these small steps, but I feel like I'm going backwards, not forward. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's just how life is, unfortunately. But you just have to have faith that that you're going to get there. And I think that, you know, inspiration and motivation are things that they don't always come naturally. You know, not everybody wakes up in the morning every single day and jumps out of bed and says, I'm going to start my day off and, and I'm going to rule the world. Um, we have to go out and look for inspiration and look for things that inspire us and that energize us every single day. It's like, I, I spoke once with uh, Bobby McFerrin, who wrote um, uh, Don't yeah. Worry, Be Happy. Yeah, and yeah, he, yeah. Said, he said, we always worry about the food that we put in our bodies. You know, we think about where are we going to go eat for lunch and what are we going to eat? And where are we going to go for dinner and what are we going to eat? And you would put so much time thinking about what we're going to eat, but we don't think about what we're going to feed our minds. Yeah. And you have to feed your mind something great every single day. Yeah. And we forget that. And if you don't feed your mind, it's eventually, it's, it, it's going yeah. to get weak and you're not going to be able to handle these tough situations. Exactly. And if you, I mean, if you just take the same analogy there, if you fill your body with junk food and sugary food and food that's bad for you, well, you're not going to end up very healthy. Same thing is if you fill your mind with junk and, and unfortunately, 
we live in a kind of society today where there is so much junk thrown at you through social oh, yeah. media, et cetera, et cetera, that you can easily binge. You can easily be like, you can get up in the morning and it's like going to McDonald's and binging on fast food to start your Absolutely. day. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's, it's terrible. So, I mean, I think that's the most important lesson for us today more than ever is we have to be very, very proactive about how we're going to spend our time because we're being bombarded by different sources and different people and different, uh, you know, uh, social media uh, uh, channels that are trying to suck us in to the yeah. wrong place. And it's easy to get sucked in because it's sweet and tasty and delicious, <laughs> but it's bad for you. So you have to, you have to be deliberate in how you're going to spend your day and, and think to yourself, how, how can I have the greatest day that I can today? You know, what, what will I eat? What will I, will I exercise? What will I listen to to inspire me? What will I read? Um, who will I interact with? Who will I surround myself with? What people do I want to be around? So, all these things, if you don't, if you're not proactive in making these choices, life is going to make these choices for you. And odds yeah. are that life is not going to make a good choice for you. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's incredibly important. The idea of conscious choices uh, rather than like outsourcing your life to fate. You, know, you need to get a, to get a handle. Of and also just going back to that idea of success and change not being linear. Because again, I think, unfortunately, a lot of people today, you know, they see, you know, like they see somebody on, on YouTube who suddenly got like 20 million followers and have a great life and it looks, and then they sort of go, oh, I'll, I'll do that. And then, you know, they get five followers and they're like, well, this sucks. Why, why don't I have all this other thing? And they don't, I mean, I think in some ways we've created this idea that, that success is linear, is linear and that it is very easy and overnight success and all of that. And the idea of hard work and, as we say, making con uh, conscious choices and that, that seems so, um, seems so old fashioned de rigueur, if you like. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it absolutely is. But I think, you know, people have to have faith in their, they have to make their conscious choices and have faith in those choices that they will lead to their ultimate success, however they define it. Um, and, and I do believe it will. Yeah, no, absolutely. So what is something else um, from your book? What is another key part that you would, you would pick out for people who are trying to make a change and sustain a change in their lives? So we talked about res personal responsibility, conscious choices, educating yourself. What is another one that you would really like to highlight? <clears throat> you know, one of the, the quotes I have is, if you want to make history, you have to do something that's never been done before. Mm. And what I, what I mean by that is that oftentimes people are afraid to get into things that have never been done before because the, the logic is, well, if it's such a great idea, why has nobody ever done it yet? Yeah. Um, but you've, you've got to have the, the guts and the courage to, to, and the vision to be able to see things that other people don't see. And sometimes if you have an idea that everyone else thinks is a bad idea, then and no one has thought of it you might be on to something because mm -hmm. that's where the break ideas breakthrough ideas come from and real great ideas often start as terrible ideas okay let's let's look at uber uber mm -hmm. was a terrible idea think about it i'm going to start a company where i'm going to have strangers pick up other strangers in their own car mm -hmm. and drive them from place to place. Okay. <laughs> that sounds like a really horrible idea. Yeah, when yeah, I first yeah. heard of Uber, I don't know how you felt about it when you first heard mm -hmm. of Uber. I thought it was the worst idea, but as you develop the idea and go, well, there's going to be an app and there's going to be background checks on the drivers and there's going to be scores and you're going to be able to track where the driver is at all times and people will, will be able to track where you are and there's going to be all this data that creates this protection for you and makes it work and oh by the way it's going to be way cheaper than a taxi cab yeah. you'll be able to get mm -hmm. the taxi cab to come pick you up much more quickly you'll know exactly when they're coming so you're not standing out on the curb waiting for <laughs> them you're inside where it's warm or where it's cool yeah. whatever you need uh, until they're going to drive up and then you're going to walk out and meet them now all of a sudden this sounds like a great idea and so you've really got to be 
open to 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 thinking about crazy ideas that yeah. that that at first sound like bad ideas and go how can i make this into a great idea what how could this be great and yeah, that, that takes vision you know and airbnb another same, example same. Mm -hmm. you're going to have a stranger sleep on your sofa come on yeah. horrible idea right but fast forward yeah. you see how it develops into a brilliant idea that's now a multi billion dollar yeah. company and I think, and I think it's a great point because I think uh, people give up too easily on their ideas sometimes. I remember reading some years back about uh, an ele an electrical company, utility company, somewhere up in, it was somewhere up far north where it snows a lot, and they had problems every winter when snow would be on the power lines and they would uh, it would put out the power, and they brainstormed how they could how they could fix this, and they said, "Oh, let's just have a no holds bar brainstorm." And somebody said, "Well, there's a lot of polar bears around there. Uh, maybe we could get the polar bears to shake the pylons and shake the snow off." And then somebody goes, "Okay, well, how are we going to get the polar bears to do that?" And they go, "Well, they like to climb, don't they? So maybe we chase them with helicopters, and they'll climb on the pylons, and when they're climbing, they shake it." And then somebody said, "Well, why don't we just use the helicopters to blow the snow off?" And that's what they do. There you go. <laughs> and, 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 and it was from a ridiculous kind of like just exploring an idea. Right. And I think to your point, I think sometimes we just give up too easily. Yeah. And you've got to be willing to explore that ridiculous idea because all great ideas, groundbreaking, new, unique ideas start as ridiculous <laughs> ideas. If they weren't ridiculous, then somebody else would have already come up yeah. with it. You know, it's too easy if it's not ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. But I love that idea about uh, about maybe that's the big change you need to make in your life is to start to think a little bit more expansively and give yourself permission to think of ridiculous uh, ideas and just and, and explore them a little more as opposed to just going, oh, well, you know, I'm not very creative or it just sounds like all I can do is come up with dumb ideas. So I'm just going to leave it go. I mean, give your permission to go that extra mile with it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's part of it today is that, I mean, I think that we're, you know, sometimes I think that we're, you know, we feel like unless we come up with the fully baked Uber idea that we don't have anything to offer. It, it, exactly. Um, and, you know, what, what most people don't, don't realize is that um, Uber didn't start out as the Uber mm. we know today. Sure. It evolved and it developed over time. Um, and, and I'm sure that, you know, the founder of Uber had a vision for Uber, but I'm willing to bet that that vision wasn't as fleshed out as it is today. And mm -hmm. he didn't have all the answers for how he was going to overcome all of the challenges but he knew he would figure them out somehow or another. You can't, you can't give up just because you think it's going to be hard. You've got to yeah. have faith that you can figure out these issues because that's the job at the end of the day is solving problems and getting over barriers. And, and, and one other thing that you touched on earlier, I think that really underpins all of this is that not just the education that's out there that you have access to, but also mentors and role models and people to bounce ideas off because you can't do this stuff completely on. You can take total responsibility for your life and do so much, but you can't do it fully on your own. You need other perspectives. So you need to go find mentors or coaches or people who, who will give you really good input and will encourage you when the going gets tough and even more so hold you accountable. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I call it my mastermind alliance. And that mm -hmm. is, you know, I've surrounded myself with people who have expertise in various different areas that I can that I can call them up and ask for their advice. So they may not know more about everything, but mm -hmm. they know more about one particular topic than I do. And I can turn to them whenever I'm having you know, a challenge, but um, no, you don't do it at all uh, uh, alone. It's not based on your current uh, knowledge. Um, you know, that's a fixed mindset. You know, you have to have a growth mm -hmm. mindset and know yeah. that you're going to grow. You're going to evolve. You're going to get smarter. You're not just going to learn things. You're actually going to get smarter in your ability to 
to uh, uh, interpret information and solve problems is going to is going to get better. And you've got to know that you're going to be, you know, you're smarter today than you've ever been, but you're going to be smarter tomorrow than you were today. And, and that just is going to keep ramping up as long as you keep uh, feeding your brain with good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So get on that good food, good mind food diet. Absolutely. Um, listen, Max, this has been great. Max Borges, who's the author of the book, How to Be fan effing Tastic, Practical Advice on How to Stop Sucking at Life and Start Being fan effing tastic so and that's a great mantra to take forward with you you've heard about here there's the book uh you heard some great advice here so just take responsibility get out there take a few chances learn educate yourself find surround yourself with good people and then just start exploring your ideas it doesn't matter how crazy they are you never know you one of your ideas might be just crazy enough to work absolutely all right, listen, Thank you, thanks, Max. All of Max's information will be below this video, but before we go, do please tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. So I have a public relations agency. Uh, we work with consumer tech companies exclusively. We've got 50 employees. Um, we've been around for 18 years, built the agency from one client and just me to you know where we are today. And, uh, and that's uh, one of the reasons why I, I wrote the book. And I'm hoping it'll help a lot of people. Thank you. All right. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline and CRM. Thanks again, Max. Great advice. Thank you, John. Uh, look forward to seeing you all in another interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.